Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar. We'll then run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days and then we'll continue to have a look at the mid to long range, look at the GFS, GM, Eastern WF and the ensembles. As does it look like we're going to be seeing some very warm air push up from the south early next working week but then after that as we head into the middle of september we could be seeing high pressure build in now we are getting to the point of the, uh, of the year where high pressure doesn't necessarily mean warm weather now in the day it could still be pretty decent depending on the upper air temperatures but at night likely now that those temperatures are going to fall away and i wouldn't be surprised if some areas in around, around a week's time started to see mid to low single digits overnight some areas potentially even seeing a frost so it could be really quite chilly overnight the days will still be pleasant where we have sunshine but we do have a bit of trapped cloud it could start to feel a little bit chilly in that uh, and yeah it could be a little bit of a nip in the air as we head into the middle of september uh, and as we are now into meteorological autumn but we still have a lot of weather to get through until that potential high pressure system builds in so we'll run through what that, what is happening over the next few days so do remember if you enjoyed my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now if we do start on the live radar you can see it is a much quieter day now pretty much consistently for the past week we've had a lot of heavy showers and thunderstorms but we have no weather warnings and we have minimal showers today there are a few showers breaking out across eastern areas a few heavy in uh, in a few places so i'm recording this just before midday so perhaps a few more showers this afternoon but majority of the invisibility has moved eastwards now so it does mean that most areas are going to be dry today but there is still quite a bit of cloud around as we do have lingering weather fronts or remnants of weather fronts and lingering bits of instability with some cloud left over and that just means that some areas perhaps in the east where we do have a few showers around uh, it could still be reasonably cool and a little bit miserable under the thicker cloud um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that uh, but it is dry and that's the important thing today after a lot of areas uh, have seen a lot of rain over the last week or so now if you put on those temperatures you'll be able to see um how it isn't amazingly warm today uh, but it's not amazingly cool either you can see plenty of yellows and some slight tinge of oranges here which is symbolic of sort of mid to high teens maybe touching in the low 20s and I'm, i wouldn't be surprised to see mid 20s perhaps uh, next week monday tuesday time for the high pressure builds in later next week into next weekend so yeah temperatures are going to be up and down it's a little bit nippy out there in a few spots but still equally warm where we do have some sunshine but the temperatures are pretty much evenly distributed today there's no real hot spots or amazingly cool spots unless of course you have got elevation which you can clearly see is where the blues are uh, but as i said i'm expecting some more oranges and reds uh, as we have through, through the next days uh, the next few days but you can see most of northwest europe is cooling down all that hot air the reds and pinks are now back towards italy spain southern france south of the alps uh, and down towards north africa as we do uh start to develop some chillier air masses over the top of us because of course to the north pole it is rapidly cooling down now as we head towards winter so if you go over to the ukv now and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days now if we do start to send the precipitation you can see some precipitation and uh, showers moving in the east today a few scattered here or there and some cloud that cloud could break over the course of this afternoon giving some sunny spells in a few places as we head through into sunday a weather front does arrive from the west predominantly giving precipitation across northern ireland republic of ireland but also could be in parts of western scotland western wales and southwest england and some thicker cloud in general further eastwards will be very dry and could be pretty pleasant beyond that that weather front does push through mainly in the north uh, areas to the south of sort of northwest england northern wales northeast england are going to see minimal precipitation at all a bit of thicker cloud though and as we head through beyond uh, that into monday afternoon you can see there is a bit of precipitation in the south as the weather front eventually clears but it's just bringing thicker cloud in most areas and just some patchy showers here or there 
through Tuesday afternoon, you can see actually pretty pleasant. It could be quite a warm day uh, on Monday and Tuesday in the south, mid-20s. As I said, quite a muggy, humid feel potentially. And as we head into Wednesday, you could see some heavy, thundery showers pushing into the south. As a result of that very humid air mass to the south, could be pushing in a few thunderstorms, perhaps in the south there. But I'm not expecting anything too crazy at this stage. Just got to keep an eye on that. And as we head through to Thursday, you can see it is pretty dry uh, as higher pressure does try to start to build in. If you look at that pressure, you can see that higher pressure building in from the west. It's not amazingly high at this stage, but it will be increasing and in trying to fend off weather fronts from the west. Now, if you look at those upper air temperatures, now you can see how it is pretty warm early next week. Look at that Monday, 11, 12, 13, 40, maybe even 16 or 17 degrees at 850 HPA, which is incredibly hot for this time of year. Even the 20 degree ice firm is just across northern France. You can see down at the bottom right of the screen there. Uh, and of course, if we did see that come in, it would be incredibly hot. Record upper air temperatures probably for September, uh, and that would give mid to high 30s, maybe even 40 degrees come July, but considering it's September, a 15 degree ice firm moving in is only going to give us temperatures perhaps around the mid 20s, whereas it probably give us temperatures around the low 30s if this were a month or two ago. Uh, so yeah, we are transitioning out of the ability to have very warm weather. Yes, mid 20s, maybe even 30 degrees is still possible for another couple of weeks if we did see the exact right scenario. But here, a warm air mass is moving in. Not exact right scenario because we do have a lot of cloud and precipitation, especially further northwards limiting that warmth uh, but it could still get to mid-20s so if we do have a look at those two meter temperatures uh, you can see uh, this afternoon those temperatures peaking around the high teens low 20s maybe 20 21 degrees in a few areas in the east midlands but widely sort of that 15 to 20 degree range it's quite similar into tomorrow could be a tad warmer uh, but similar in terms of sort of high teens, low 20s, but could be a wider area of 20 to 22 across England and Wales, maybe even 23 in a few spots. So quite a pleasant, warm mid-September day. As we head through into Monday, again, it could be quite warm, especially in the south. Um, again, you can see maybe 24, 25 degrees in a few spots, but widely... You can see it's cooler further north. It's only mid to maybe high teens simply because uh, of the precipitation and cloud pushing in. And you can see for Tuesday, those temperatures are still warm in the south, 22 or 23, but widely mid to high teens further northwards. And into Wednesday, again, maybe 20 to 22 degrees in the south, much cooler further northwards, only mid to maybe high teens, but again, feeling a little bit more miserable under thicker cloud. But we'll have to see what happens later next week. All depends on cloud amounts this time of year, uh, whether we're going to see sort of high teens, low 20s, or slightly cooler than that, and the feel of the air as well. So I have to keep an eye on that over the next uh, couple of days, but for the time being, nothing too eventful over the next five days. Could be some heavy rain, perhaps for Monday and Tuesday in the north. Could be some warm weather in the south. Uh, but yeah, all eyes are on the high pressure that could build later next week. So if you now have a look at the GFS, uh, have a look at what that's showing over the next couple of weeks, you can see it's quite active in the North Atlantic at the moment. We've got the low pressure clearing to our east. Uh, we've got remnants of Danielle, uh, ex-hurricane Danielle there in the North Atlantic. We've got another uh, ex-tropical system out there. I think that's Earl moving out into the northeast. Now, all these systems are going to mix up in the Atlantic. And you can see the Dan Danielle moves to our south, pulls up a southerly wind. Warm air quite initially, pushing into the south. Doesn't quite get the hottest air in, but still 15 degrees at entry for HPA potentially getting in, maybe mid-20s there. Beyond that, though, higher pressure does build in, and you can see uh, ex-tropical systems out in the Atlantic don't do much. May actually go under higher pressure. Now, the big thing we have to keep an eye on for this high pressure build, which is between sort of day five and day seven, is the upper air temperatures. Now, if it builds in more from the west, then we could see a northerly flow initially, and that could put quite chilly air uh, aloft, and that could mean temperatures in the day are only mid to low teens, and overnight could get to low single digits. Or we could have high pressure build over the top of us, which the GEM run does, which we'll have a look at in a minute, which builds much higher upper air temperatures, around 10 to 15 degrees at 50 HPA, which would give our temperatures around 20 degrees in the day, but perhaps high single digits overnight. So going to be a massive diurnal range coming up, a uh, good 10 to 15 degrees plus. Uh, in the last week or so, we've had sort of a 5 degree diurnal range between sort of 22, 23 in the day and around 16, 17 degrees at night because we've had such a warm, humid air mass ahead of the lower pressure so yeah big changes coming as that high pressure moves 
out into the east. We do try and pull a bit of an easterly wind in there, but eventually the Atlantic actually wins at 384 hours, and we go very unsettled uh, with low pressure pushing in back in off the Atlantic. So yeah, it could be really quite miserable if we saw that. Now that is 384 hours. Uh, we can't really rely on anything beyond day 10, as I keep saying, with the active uh, ex-hurricanes and Atlantic systems, that brings a lot of uncertainty into the jet stream and positioning of high pressure, low pressure, because of course these hurricanes, if they are slightly stronger than forecast, it can inject more energy and that can shift the jet stream and really change our weather, give us a massive ripple effect downstream. So yes, things can change definitely beyond the sort of the seven day time frame, but I think seven to day time, 10 day uh, time frame, it looks firmly likely higher pressure is going to be building in in and around the uk if not over the top of us but it all depends on the air mass and what will that do to our surface temperatures now if we do have a look at the gm run and see what that is showing again lower pressure clearing to our east danielle to bring up that tropical southerly flow and then eventually high pressure built in now initially we do have a bit of a chilly and northerly flow but you can see the high pressure builds over the top of us and we see that 10 degree ice firm engulf the uk now you'd think that'd be really quite warm. Look, that in the summer would be mid to high 20s, sparkling heat wave like conditions uh, if you just put this in, ja uh, in July. But if we do have a look at this now uh, and zoom into the United Kingdom, look, you can actually see here the afternoon temperatures 19, 20 degrees, but the overnight temperatures maybe mid to high single degrees. Digits, so feeling really chilly overnight, and of course, that means it's chilly in the evenings and chilly in the early mornings, but should spike quite considerably in the early to mid afternoon. So, we'll have to keep an eye exactly what's going to happen with this. It all depends, as I said, on the exact positioning of the higher pressure and the exact uh, upper air temperatures as well. Now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare over the next 10 days. Again, low pressure clearing to our east. We have uh, some small low pressure systems pushing in over the early next week with that tropical uh, air mass pushing up and then we see a bit of a northerly flow and the high pressure builds in within that northerly flow and look at the upper air temperatures it's quite chilly around freezing to five degrees at Andrew FDHP air that hot or warmer air is going around to our west so this would give much chillier conditions towards the surface very similar in terms of high pressure building in but a lot chillier uh, look at the temperature deviations, a lot more blues potentially building there, giving us really, really chilly autumnal conditions. If we do move to the European outlook uh, and put on the two meter temperatures, um, again, if we have a look at the daytime temperatures, again, maybe mid teens, 15, 16, maybe 17 degrees, so not too chilly, but it, the temperatures on the thermometer are not amazing, and it would have a nip to the air. And you look at those overnight conditions, mid single digits there, maybe even low single digits there in just over a week's time, really chilly. And again, these are not rural temperatures, these are low resolution widespread lows it would be getting a good few degrees to cool in this in quite a few areas so wouldn't even be able to rule out a bit of a frost in some areas this is what you can see yes the pressure pattern is very similar between the gem gfs and ecmwf but the exact wind direction and the exact air origin where, where exactly the air originates from um, is going to decide whether it's sort of a warmish higher pressure with the chilly nights but nothing too uh, cold there still pleasant in the day we do see some more chilly conditions temperatures a good five degrees lower in the day and overnight could get really quite cold uh, as well sort of a hint uh, of getting towards wintry sort of temperatures down towards the low single digits so yeah got to keep an eye on this uh, but it is this time of year it is expected that we do start to see these colder nights start appearing but it is always a shock every year uh, as we come uh, off the back of summer and especially this year with such a warm long uh, summer with some hottest temperatures we've ever seen the hottest temperature we've ever seen with the 40 degrees back in July um, so yeah going to be a real shock when these cooler conditions do arrive whether they'll arrive within this higher pressure system uh, come at next week or end of this coming working week yet to be determined exactly uh, just it depends to set on the upper air temperatures but we'll have to see now, after we finish by having a look at the ensembles, if we do start on the GFS ensembles, look at the upper air temperatures, you can see really warm heat spike 
early next week. Could be some big precipitation as well if we do see some big thunderstorms and some heavy precipitation build within that hotter air mass. But there is some uncertainty with that. Quite a few big precipitation spikes there, but only perhaps on maybe a third of the ensemble members. Others are dry. Beyond that, though, the temperatures do really plummet by around 15 degrees or 10 to 15 degrees. They're getting down towards the low single digits at 850 HPA. Majority of ensemble members are below average, minimal precipitation. It is going to feel chilly out there. Longer term, towards the last week or so of September, temperatures return more towards average and precipitation climbs once again. But it is still very uncertain. Can't say anything too much with uh, well, any uh, any detail, really, because it is in the longer term. I said anything beyond around day seven is a bit uncertain, but day 10, uh, yeah, we are. Uh, it can flip flop very, very quickly. You can see from the sea level pressure, high pressure is building in from the middle of the month. So yeah, high pressure building in on pretty much all of the ensemble members. A few uh, not quite building in, but majority high pressure building in. And you look at those two meter temperatures and you can see it is pretty chilly. Some of these ensemble members are having highs of around 15, 16 degrees, which yeah, doesn't sound too bad on the thermometer, but it's the coldest uh high we've had in three or four months um, and it would be pretty nippy uh, and then overnight those temperatures dropping below 10 degrees again these are low resolution get those high resolution in could pro could probably fall uh, to around five degrees or lower in a few spots and again look at the dew point because it is dropping considerably again a four to five degree dew point is not cold remember we need zero degree dew points to get um, snow and, and the dew points generally in winter that's sort of an average winter dew point uh, when we've got Atlantic systems pushing in but considering the dew points been around the mid-teens the past couple of months again just shows you that it is a chilly more arctic uh, colder feel now if we do compare it to the ECM WF ensemble see what that is showing again very similar warm over the next couple of days big pickup early next week potentially some big precipitation associated with that as well and then a drop off in around five or six days time to well below average a good five degrees below average down towards one or two degrees angel of thpa perhaps even below freezing from some of the ensemble members so east and blue f is definitely a little bit chillier very dry well, it does pick up towards the last 10 days of the month but there is a lot of uncertainty and scatter with that and if we do have a look at the two meter temperatures from this you can see quite a big drop. Warm over the next few days, quite likely to still be above 20 degrees in most areas over the next four days or so, especially down in the south and the east where we do have some more sunshine and those warmer air masses next week. But as that cooler, higher pressure builds in later next week, so the high temperature in London is 15 or 16 degrees. We'll probably be chilly in northwards and in under the centre of the high, uh, perhaps further westwards as well. And the overnight temperature is dropping down towards 5 degrees and locally could be colder than that. So yeah, it could be some very chilly, higher pressure building in next week so we've got to keep an eye on this could be an inversion coming uh, and yeah be dry that's the only positive but it is going to feel chilly and i will reiterate these thermometer temperatures do not sound that bad but it's because we're coming off the back of three or four months of 20 plus degrees every single day pretty much bar from maybe the last couple of days in a few regions with some big thunderstorms uh, and overnight temperatures not dropping much below 10 to 15 degrees uh, and suddenly seeing uh, daytime temperatures of 15 degrees and overnight temperatures of 5 degrees or lower it is going to be a shock to the system even though uh, compared to our normal winter conditions it's, it's pretty mild really so yeah do keep an eye on that uh, and of course you may if we do see these sort of conditions may need to get the winter coats out again especially if you're up early in the morning or out late at night it is going to be cold indeed so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed uh, make sure you enjoy the warm weather over here, have over the next few days because this could be the last sort of consistent 20 degrees we do see uh, in months, perhaps even six months. So do, uh, do, uh, do enjoy it. Uh, and yeah, uh, I'll see you again uh, for another video soon.